Now, some people would say which group of people would not have interest, even if we came together from every state or from every ethnic nationality, as it were, we will all be coming to the table with our different interests. No, yes, when everybody comes there to ventilate it, some people will go there, they have interests which more often than not if you look at it upon you know closer scrutiny you probably find out it is more personal than group he says he's going there to represent you i'll give you an example for example uh, you know an uh, example that always comes to mind professor mori has made the point and nobody has controverted him ogun state nobody asked for the present day ogun state it was obasanjo when they brought everything and excised ogun state to be for whatever reason Yes. So you have all those things. Professor Murray has said it. He said it again. That So that point, you now see a particular um, parochial interest. The, the people of the state, have they complained? No. Have, have they said, no, we, no, we, no, we don't no, want no. this the, state. The point, the point I'm saying, let's say, for example, I didn't ask for oranges. And then you put a, a basket of orange in front of me. I say, oh, how nice of you. But the point I am making is that Professor Murray, who should know, made the point, and he's made it repeatedly, that Ogun State was not amongst the initial states to be created. Uh -huh. Then it was, it was when the thing now got to Obasanjo, then as the, the military head of state, what turned out of uh, the final thing, you had Ogun State carved out. Now, uh, on, a, on a point of departure now, are we not, in all honesty, are we not excessively relying on the constitution because it seems with the way we are going we'll, we'll still have to wait for a time a constitution per permit me that uh, that will stipulate how many times should i go to the toilet i mean because it seems there's an absence of a national course we don't really have a national cohesion like uh we are nigerians so we, we, we need to how do we build a national cohesion now? Because the, the, the whole essence of this thing, people will still find a way to dance around whatever constitution we put on black and white. So, but if we have a good will, a commitment to national cause, a national cohesion, we will not be exploring on the few gray areas we have in our constitution. I agree with you. For one, the constitution is too wordy. And then this, every day you go to amend it and everything. I think that boils down to the point I made before. And uh, Nigeria has one of the uh, largest uh, volume of constitution in the world. Yes. Also boils down to that same fact that I'm saying that, you know, the way, you see, uh, in the life of this particular assembly, you've had how many, they call it alterations, amendments to doing it. it. You know, it, it, what it presupposes is that probably there was not enough thought how many amendments have you had of the american constitution you see if we come here and say these are the key principles upon which we have decided to come together for example a key point in which some people call fiscal federalism and whatever what we have this we must go back to decide what we have is a sharing federation not a productive federation uh, do, do you yeah, think we need to much. come? Uh, permit me, sorry. Do, do you think we need to come back to a point where we need to decide if we are really one people? Yes, we will discuss that. You see, but the point is that the world is moving towards a convergence. But the most important thing is that you must understand your differences, and then uh, you must understand your differences. Then emphasize those things that um bind you together but when you go and pepper the cracks as if uh, i mean you're wearing a black suit i'm wearing a, a gray one if we say no 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 we're colorblind and everything and then maybe we put into the washer what comes out of it i mean uh, i mean um both of us will be worse off for it let's try and look at some issues uh, in the constitution uh, before we leave uh, and that uh, has to do with uh, chapter two of the constitution uh, it talks about fundamental objectives of uh, directives, principles of state policy, which uh, many states will say it is laudable. When you look at it, it is a people's affair that can actually uplift the people. But, uh, you know, there's also a caveat there, which definitely everyone has been talking about, that uh, some of these mentioned in that chapter two of the Constitution, they say it remained justifiable. Non -justiciable. In, I mean, non-justiciable in the law court. So how dare you put something in the Constitution for the betterment of the people 
in one breath uh, and you go there to say well you cannot enforce them just in case anyone flouts such you see, these are supposed to be high-minded principles to guide your exercise of state power. You know, because if you go, you must allow some level of discretion, which is where I think we, in addition to the constitutional amendment, we have to go back to how we recruit our leadership. You know, a situation which I also think that part of it. Uh, we won't go into that nexus so much now, but part of it has to do with the contraption we have here. Where at the end of the day, you end up having not your best people running the affairs. Because at the end of the day, if you do, there must be a certain level of discretion invested in whoever is exercising state power. Where they exercise that mischievously, you always have problem. But some will differ with you and say, well, it's the Constitution that gives them the powers not to even enforce them because they say, well, you can't, be, uh, you can't take that person to court and make him or her uh, enforce, uh, or you cannot enforce such provisions in Chapter 2 of the Constitution because uh, it is uh, non-justiciable. Yeah, for the simple reason that it is not practical. So it gives, it gives room for someone not to even do any of that uh, for the people. No, no, even without those fundamental objectives, a person actually, you know, aspiring to or a group or a society aspiring to progress will always have such things that you want progress for the, for the people. But what I'm saying is that the leadership is critically important. For example, they say that they want to split the office of the uh, AG and Minister of Justice and you have one you have the other i tell you if you do not ensure that the people holding those offices pass muster you're not going to have problem you, you you're not going to have uh, solve the problem again i will tell you we don't we, we you know we span history if we go back to the old um, old uh, regional structure the office the the, the powers of public prosecution invested in the AG today used to be with the old office of the director of public prosecution who was an independent office or which was an independent office now in the old eastern region just uh, later to become uh, the uh, Supreme Court Justice Mike Ajebo was the Minister for Justice he had problems with on UK G7 UK ACN who was the DPP Leading to UK, throwing the toilet to go. So you go back there and say, no, 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 no. You create the office of AG separately, you create the minister separately. You are not informed by the historical lessons when you had such offices separate. The key thing for me is that we have people. When the National Assembly goes back to tell somebody, oh, you take a bow, and uh, Chuku Merije was complaining, not many of us complain. You come there. In, U in U.S., before you go in, they know the particular portfolio you're given so that we know that you're fit for office. Here, you bring everybody in, say, do blanket clearance. You're bringing somebody to the office, you say, oh, no. So you're going there like an office of the attorney general that is created in the Constitution. For me, it is the most critical office after the vice president, even the secretary to the government or the federation, is not provided for in the Constitution. The president can decide to take that office and exercise it. But he cannot exercise the office of the AG the way it is because it's a constitutional creation. Now, the, the, uh, national, the Senate is content with having like 30, 40 people do blanket clearance. You don't know the portfolio they are going. And then you come back and you say, no, 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 no. You have a problem with this. You have a problem with that. Even what I dare say, as much as we need um, uh, you know, a lot of fundamental tinkering, or reworking. Even what we have now, the operators are not operating it in my uh, in my estimation mm -hmm. up to forty percent capacity. That why is it. Why do you say so? Now, for example, do I need anybody to tell me that you don't go and put your hand with impunity on the public tail? This constitution does not expressly say that you should go and take money, but we know that it has become the norm. 
And then the impunity. You see, whatever we do at the end of the day, I, I, I think we all have to think about it. Law and order is the primary question because the next day, somebody does something and there is no punishment. The next day, the next man would do it. Even what we have in Boko Haram now, he had been building up in different ways, apart from the corruption, also the occasional religious crisis. Somebody went and killed one um, youth copper. Nobody, we don't know anything about so it. You, try, you, you think that this has uh, some constitutional uh, angle to it? Sorry? This one it has got to do with the constitution, the issue ha of Boko Haram? Sorry? The issue of Boko Haram has something to do with the Constitution? Partly. Partly. Yes. You see, I'll tell you, when you go now that in the areas, the economy there has more or less collapsed, but there are still federal allocations. I do believe that the locations where Boko Haram, the locations where Boko Haram, uh, you know, are strong, needs still to do more. But you see, you, people are not hit where they are, you know, in their pocket. Because at the end of the day, the state government is assured of its main allocation from the center. If your major existence is on what the economic activity within your, within your locale, then you have to do more. Because those people are not ghosts like they used to say, the, the police will say. So a lot more needs to be done. But as it is now, some people can afford a bit to be a bit uh, less affair, you know, about some of these things. Because at the end of the day, Abuja gives you uh, your own uh, handout and you go home and you share it. The same thing with the local government. Which for me, by the way, there's a critical point. For me, the local government shouldn't be in the constitution. You leave it for the states. For example, like a state like Lagos State, the way f the, f the fundamentals of local government operate against Lagos, which is a mainly urbanized mm. state.